Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mount Tammany Ridge channel. I'm uh, down here uh, in the wood yard and uh, I'm hoping to get these uh, bent up uh, side tables for the uh, champion splitter put back on. I uh, been kind of champing it a bit to get down here and do some sort of uh, wood splitting. I'm not very sure I'm going to get to any of that today, unfortunately. But uh, I'm going to get these things put back on. I might run, you know, a couple rounds or something through it uh, just to just to see how that repair holds up. And uh, figured I'd uh, throw the camera on and bring you guys along to see if maybe something else will fail. these old split chips out of the way so I don't break my ankle. Come on now. Didn't exactly give us uh, North Americans a lot of room to get our fingers in there. I know you probably can't see again what I'm trying to do here. I'm sure you guys have at least that good of, a, of an imagination where you could figure this out. done after all that malarkey I uh, normally it would have been uh, easy as just uh, firing up the tractor and using the three-point combination uh, hitch on there uh, however I just uh, remembered before that the uh, the auger is actually on there so wasn't about to go through all that just to move the splitter so then I figured oh yeah you know what I'm just gonna hop in the Ranger I'm gonna put the uh, elevated hitch on there and I'll move it with that. Well, I spent about 20 minutes looking for that. Couldn't find that either. So I uh, had to improvise. Once again, just another one of those things that you can pull off with a mini excavator that uh, comes in real handy. So um, yeah, so I'm going to show you this 
this troublemaker here, right? So this little tiny thing is the log round that did the damage to my machine. So now, I mean, I've put plenty of, you know, crotch, you know, uh, sections through my splitter before, and I've split them both directions, actually, you know, even this way, you know, flipping it like that. And typically I do, I flip it like that. But this time around, for whatever reason, I just threw it on there and I tried to run the wedge in there. And that's, that's what did it. Just this little, this little tiny guy. So this is gonna be the first one that we run through. And no, I'm not going to run it through the way it broke it. Because uh, who knows when I'm gonna be able to fix that thing again. And uh, let's just hope uh, my repair, let's just hope my repair is uh, enough. We'll see. So, and the other thing is uh, what would have prevented it from happening altogether in the beginning was, was bar oil. Typically, put some bar oil in there, cycle it a few times while it's warming up, and I imagine that probably would have eliminated the possibility of that altogether. But we will find out. We will find out right now.
everybody. It is now the next late morning. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, had to kind of cut out there on the camera real quick there for a moment. Had a uh, visitor stop by and uh, they uh, they don't really know that I have the channel or anything like that and not sure that they would even understand. So <laughs> I figured I'd uh, just save myself the time of explanation and um, just uh, end it there. And uh, by the time we got done kibitzing and stuff like that, it was pretty much dark. So, uh, but here we are, we're down in the wood yard. Finally, I got the umbrella here. I will be deploying that momentarily and uh, I'm gonna oil up the uh, splitter here, get the sucker fired up and I'm gonna see, I got, um, yeah, yeah, you can see it in the camera. I got all maple here. Um, so we're gonna be taking this maple, rendering it down and try to get this basket topped off and done. Um, and I'd like to, uh, you know, take some of this other um, the honey locust, if I can find, I know there's like a bunch of pieces kind of buried here, but I'm gonna see if I can top off that honey locust basket and get that done so I can get these dated and put aside. And I uh, think we actually uh, might test some of that uh, uh, do the uh, moisture test with the top test meter on uh, what is that the uh, is that the oak or is that the honey locust I can't really see it from here but uh, we got a basket of honey locust over there and also a bas uh, basket of oak so um, been a little bit of running around a little bit crazy uh, some things are working out some things aren't and uh, it took me a little bit to find my ear protection so finally I found it let's get splitting
All right, so here we are. I got these two baskets topped off finally. Now I can get them out of my way so that they can begin their seasoning process. So uh, this basket here is maple. That basket's a mix between honey locust and some sort of oak, I believe. Um, I know, I'm pretty sure it's pin oak, something like that. It's very stringy. I believe pin oak is, has that similar characteristics to it and uh, you know, even uh, a little naughty. So, um, naughty, not naughty, naughty. So, you can see here, I, uh, you know, put what it is and tagged it with a date. So, um, same, obviously, on that one. And uh, <clears throat> over here, this stuff uh, has been picked through, okay? So, during the spring and summer, Teresa and I had gone and gotten some uh, ash totes. All right, so these two totes were completely full of ash and we picked through them, you know, kind of hand selected uh, pieces that we could use and resplit for bundles. And that's how we were making our bundles. And these are the pieces that were, you know, some of them were knotty and wavy. Some of them had bark. Some of them were a little short because, you know, the, you know, when you get cutting logs, you know, sometimes you end up with a piece that's a little over length or under length things like that and uh, so that's what these two totes are so hopefully um, we will be starting to get into there is a little bit of ash in this pile of rounds here um, not enough to you know really put a dent in an empty tote but we might be able to fill up one of those totes on top of the uh, original ash my thinking is um, because, you know, ash does have a little bit of a shelf life issue. So we're probably going to take that tote, the little bit of ash that's left in there, um, and we're going to put it in that tote. Um, and maybe just uh, top off the top of that tote with some freshly split ash. Uh, and we'll make sure they're sizes that are going to dry and season quickly, you know, within a few months. Once we have that dated, we'll know when that's going to be ready. And we're going to base that date off of the freshly split stuff. It you know, might be like 8 to 10 inches of fresh stuff on top. So uh, we'll go by that date, not the original season date, which is, uh, this is way seasoned. Uh, it's probably a year and a half old, actually, that tote. So, um, and then over here, we got a whole bunch of ash in here. And down there, the, fr the stuff that I picked up recently We've got a whole bunch of ash there. We've also got some nice cherry in here. There's a couple logs that I would like to try to, you know, pick around. Um, I don't want to process them. Um, you know, my friend Joe has a uh, an LT40, and he's thinking maybe possibly either I'll bring those logs to him or he'll bring his LT40 here, and we might do a video on, you know, uh, milling these down. So uh, that could be a fun video for some of you guys to watch. Uh, and as far as in here, uh, you know, we've got some uh, maple, we've got some birch, uh, we've got some oak, a few things. There's a black birch in here somewhere. I, th I think it's like right there. I think that's the black birch. I've been dying to split that to see what that looks like. This tree here, that actually popped all by itself. Uh, that was not that was not split like that when I uh, went and got it. So that's, uh, that's seriously drying out. So, uh, but yeah, that's it for as far as uh, what I've got as far as unsplit inventory. So I had promised you guys I was gonna take you uh, over to those totes over there and uh, select a few of uh, pieces out of there. And uh, we're gonna use the top test moisture meter and we're gonna see what we got going on. All right, so this tote here is the oak tote. And, yep, that's definitely gonna be pretty damp. That's a nice big thick piece. So we'll bring that one. Um, and over here, this is another tote of uh, that mystery wood. Um, we're starting to believe that it might be honey locust. I wanna try to get a nice, uh, fat piece here 
course the the ideal one's so buried that it would take me forever to get down to it so that's a that's a pretty decent piece so we're going to bring this over by the splitter uh, split this thing see what kind of moisture we're talking about here Let's get you guys set up on a tripod. All right, let's turn this thing on, I think. There we go. All right, and uh, we're going to set it, the, set the mode to B, okay? That should be uh, for things like oak and ash and those hardwoods. <clears throat> so we're gonna check it before we split it here. So the outside's reading about 13 and a half, 14 too, you know, it's jumping back and forth. Let's see another spot. 13.6, 14.9. Now this, uh, <clears throat> this oak here has been in uh, oak ground form probably for a couple years. And they were, gosh, I'd have to say the oak rounds were probably, oh, maybe 22 to 24 inches in diameter. So, uh, as you can imagine, they, you know, they, they did season some, but uh, not all the way to the middle for sure. Okay, you can you can see there's like a little band of darkness in there, all right? So, all right, so we're still looking at 33 percent and change. Okay, now you'll see a band of dryness here. That's drier, not that dry, not uh, that wet, but and then another one here. So we're gonna try that. Looking closer to 28. Okay, still going down. Yep, so we're pretty much right on 28 there. We'll try further down here. 27. Okay. Try another band of dark. So we're 29. Going down, going down. So yeah, we're pretty much 29, 28. Still going down still dropping right so yeah that moisture that moisture level just keeps dropping okay um so you're, we're, we're down about to 24 in that dark band now that's to be expected right so this was the outside and this was an outside right so you've got a dry band a little bit of moisture that's probably from rain a dry band that you know didn't quite dry out but kept getting wet because when it rained saturate that first band start to saturate that rain cycle would stop drying cycle would begin and then it would dry to this point and it still hasn't gotten back down to that so that's kind of my thinking that was going on there as you can see the wind is uh being pain in the butt or in this case a pain in the umbrella because uh my umbrella purchase is a fail <laughs> so uh that's that piece so that's the oak all right now let's uh split into this honey locust aka mystery wood and see what we're working with there this honey locust all right this stuff has been actually sitting uh laying in a gal's backyard uh, as basically the, the tree company came in, they dropped the tree, they took the top, they chipped it, they did whatever they did, but then they left the whole rest of the tree laying in her yard. So, and it was laying like that for, I think she said about two, the, the better part of two and a half years, somewhere in there, I think. So, uh, <clears throat> we'll have to see 
how far into this tree that moisture was still existing. Um, so, let's see. We'll have to check all sides here. I think I may have lost my space. Nope, there we are. Okay, so it was definitely that side. Whatever is what it is. So, right in the meat of it there. So we're 30%, okay, out here in the, I guess you might call that the sapwood, I guess. 20%, 19, still going down. All right, so we're probably looking more like 18%, you know, if, if I, yeah, see, yeah, if I, if I keep leaving it in there, it just keeps dropping. So, um, let's try down here, 29 keeps dropping so there is a chance that this honey locust you know is going to be around the 20 percent mark you know by maybe uh i don't know i guess if i had to shoot from the hip with a wild guess i'd say that's probably going to be down around 20 percent around february Maybe if I if I can keep a uh, a tarp type of top like a canopy top, nothing that covers the sides. Want to I want the wind to be able to get through there. If I can keep the sides exposed and the top from getting you know direct rain and snow accumulation on it, that stuff could probably be I'll just say burnable. I don't like to say 20% is seasoned, but it's burnable. Uh, I like to see things around, you know, 16 and lower uh, to consider it, you know, capable of producing BTUs. All right, so next in line, okay, I'm going to do a moisture test on this maple here. Um, this maple was from the top of our property uh, late spring, we had this tree taken down. Um, I think a diameter wise, on the fattest part, it was probably about 22 inches. Um, and this has been laying around in log ground form for, I don't know, technically a few days, but it's been semi bucked up from the, from the tree service company and laying over there for, well, since uh, I'd say, sometime in June I want to say probably mid-June it's been laying there so let's get a uh, a reading on it from when I split it just a little bit ago okay so <laughs> low <laughs> that's a good sign of course it's not really surprising it's maple so oh okay here we go I must have hit a button accidentally on there that okay so that makes more sense so around 20 ish let's see how far down it goes I, don't, I hope you guys can see that oh wait geez I was right off the camera there So around 21 to start. That's not too god awful. Let's uh let's split it. Let's see what Okay. So Okay, now all right. Yeah, there we are. We're up in 32, 31. Uh, it's still dropping a little bit. All right. So we're around 30%. A little bit closer to the outside. 26. All right, so uh, to give you an idea, right? So that stuff was split about uh, an hour and a half ago. And uh, just that surface area there that I tested before I split it with the, with the Fiskers, um, 
I imagine it was around 30% when I split it open. So just that it dropped 10%, you know, I about, I buried probably half the depth of those, uh, those pins on that moisture meter. So sticking all the way down that far into the wood, it had already dropped 10%, just to give you an idea of how quick maple uh, can dry. And we've got no shortage of sun as long as it's not too cloudy. And um, it's pretty common for us to have a pretty nice breeze here. Uh, sometimes we love it, sometimes we hate it. Uh, <clears throat> probably wouldn't be so bad if I had bought the right umbrella. But uh, enough of that. That'll, that'll just get me on a rant. <laughs> Ranting to myself about my decision. That's a great one. So <clears throat> that's going to be it for today's video. I uh, just wanted to bring you guys along, give you some you know, wood splitting content that wasn't just me on the excavator doing this and that and just you know the run of the mill splitting. I've been wanting to do a little bit of moisture testing for quite a uh, quite a while now. Um, just like I said in previous videos, there's just sometimes where I'll be in the middle of making a video and then all of a sudden a priority pops up. I've got to duck out and then come back to it. So, uh, and then sometimes it takes me a couple days to get back to it. So uh, I'm trying my hardest here with uh, the <laughs> with what I got going on here, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the content. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, all my new subscribers. I also appreciate very much so the loyal subscribers who continue to watch my content. Uh, means, a, means a tremendous amount to me. Um, I really enjoy making the videos, but if it wasn't for you guys watching it, I probably would have petered out uh, a long time ago. Uh, just, just because things around here as far as maintenance and you know little side jobs and stuff that pop up for... Uh, you know, hobby stuff. Um, it just uh, it's, it goes a lot faster when you don't have to ca carry a camera and a tripod and move it all around. So uh, it, it does. It makes it worth it for you guys to be watching it. So if you like the content you see here in a mount, almost got taken out by an umbrella. So if uh, anyway, <laughs> squirrel. If you guys like the content you see here on the Mount Tammany Ridge channel could just hit that like button subscribe maybe share with your friends that might be interested in the content and uh let me turn off this camera so i can show this umbrella who's the boss i think i don't know it's like uh i want to keep it but i want to get rid of it at the same time i'll see you guys in the next video you take care